Good morning, friends. Happy St. Patrick's Day and a very happy birthday to Ava today. Sending you six birthday hugs. Today we're going to read a book by Tommy DePaula and it's called Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato. It's an Irish folk tale, which means that it's been passed down from generation to generation. <clears throat> Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato. Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in all of Ireland. He would do anything to avoid working, especially if it had to do with growing potatoes. Jamie O'Rourke, his wife Eileen would say, we'll have nothing to eat this winter if you don't go out and dig up the pratties. Oh, the saints preserve us, Jamie would whine. May bags as sore as can be. Sure as I'm telling you, wife, you'll have to dig them up yourself. I'll break in two if I so much as get up out of this bed. So Eileen, who had done all the planting and watering and weeding anyhow, would go out to the tiny garden and dig up the smallest potatoes in Ireland, all because Jamie was too lazy to dig a larger garden and had no money to buy good potato seed. Then poor Eileen wrenched her back and was laid up in bed. St. Bridget and the Virgin Mary herself must have smiled on Eileen O'Rourke, the village woman said. Why, it's the first rest she's had since she married Jamie O'Rourke. With Eileen in bed, Jamie began to worry. No Eileen to dig meant no practice all winter, and no practice meant no food. Oh, poor me, well, Jamie, I'll starve to death. I'd best go to church and confess to Father O'Malley. There's no telling how soon death will be knocking on my door. So even though it was midnight, Jamie set out for the church. He was about halfway down the hill when he heard singing and a tap, tap, tapping sound. Sure as I wouldn't be knowing, Jamie whispered, but I swear it's a leprechaun. And sure enough, sitting in a circle of ferns in the moonlight was a leprechaun singing and hammering tiny nails into the heels of the fairy boots he was making. Jamie knew just what to do. He crept up and grabbed the little man by his coattails and held him firm. Let me go! Let me go! the leprechaun shouted. Not on your life, Jamie said. Not until you show me where you keep your pot of gold. Now everyone in Ireland knows that leprechauns make boots and dancing shoes for the fairies who pay for them with gold. And everyone knows that if you catch a leprechaun, he'll pay for his freedom with his pot of gold. But this leprechaun was cleverer than most. Oh, please, mortal man, he pleaded. I'm just starting out my fairy making shoes. I only have one or two pieces of gold in my pot. Won't you take a wish instead? Why, what would I wish for, Jamie asked, me who's about to die of starvation because my wife is sick in bed and can't dig the practies for the winter, and there's such puny practies anyhow. Well, said the leprechaun, reaching into his pocket, you could wish for the biggest practy in the world. It would take all, last all winter, and you wouldn't have to do anything more than plant this seed, water it, and wait. That sounded wonderful to Jamie. Done, he shouted, and as the leprechaun dropped the seed into Jamie's hand, Jamie let go of his coattails, and off that leprechaun scampered. When Eileen had heard what he had done, she was furious. Jamie O'Rourke, you're not only the laziest man in Ireland, but a fool as well, giving up a pot of gold for a pratty seed. Well, I'm going to plant the seed and water it, and you'll see, Jamie said. And out he went. And Faith and Eileen did see, in no time at all, the biggest, finest potato plant had sprouted out of the ground, followed by the potato itself. It was so big, it pushed up not only all the dirt in the garden, but the garden shed and the corner of the cottage as well. 
Well, surely now it's ready to dig, Jamie said proudly. Look at the little dog. <laughs> he hoed all around it, but he couldn't dig that pratty out of the ground. He got a beam and a big rock and tried to pry it out. He pushed and he pushed, but it wouldn't budge. As he was pondering what to do, his neighbor passed by on his way to the village. He couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't wait to tell everyone in the village what he had seen. And before you knew it, the hill up to Jamie's was filled with villagers coming to see the big potato. Where did it come from, they asked. Jamie told them all about the lucky night he had caught the leprechaun and how smart he had been. Why, anyone could have gotten a pot of gold, he bragged. But the biggest pratty in the world? <laughs> well, that took some doing. However, did you outsmart a leprechaun, they all asked at once. Jamie hesitated and scratched his head. Oh, we'll help you dig your pratty out, Jamie, if you tell us how you did it. And they grabbed shovels and hoes and started to dig. They dug and they dug and they pushed and they shoved until the potato flew up out of its hole. It rolled down the hill faster and faster until it reached the bottom where it bounced up high and came to a stop, wedged between the stone walls on either side of the road. What to do now? That pratty is so big that no one, no cart, nothing can get by it, the constable complained to Father O'Malley. How's a body to get in or out of the village? What shall we do, the villagers wailed. They all looked at Jamie and said, It's your pratty. You'll have to move it out of our way. Well, Eileen spoke up. There's more than enough pratty for everyone. Why don't you all take some? So the villagers sawed and chopped and carted off huge pieces of potato while Jamie sat on the stone wall and watched. All winter long, everyone had potato to eat and eat and eat until no one wanted to see or hear of potato again. In the spring, Jamie said, I saved a potato eye for a seed, and it's just about time to plant it. Oh, no, the villagers all cried. If you promise not to plant it, Jamie, we'll promise before St. Patrick's and all the saints to see that you and Eileen always have plenty to cook and eat. We don't want another giant pratty around here. Jamie smiled and agreed. What a perfect life for a lazy man. And so you see, darling Eileen, Jamie told her, I wasn't such a fool with that leprechaun after all. And Eileen had to admit that Jamie O'Rourke was right. And there's the leprechaun with his giant pot of gold. Today, friends, I would like you to make a giant pot of gold you're going to use your black construction paper that I put in your yellow folder and you're going to cut yourself a giant pot of gold. You can make a half circle, a semicircle, and a flat part on top to make the pot. Then you're going to use the yellow construction paper and you are going to cut out pieces of gold. Cut out some circles. Try to cut at least 10 circles. Because when you're all done with your 10 circles, I want you to write 10 of your kindergarten sight words on the words. Write 10 of the sight words that you don't know so that you can learn them. For those of you that know all of your kindergarten sight words, I want you to write some of the first grade sight words that you don't know. When you are finished today, I want you to write a page in your writing packet, do one page of your math packet, and you can also do day one or day two, depending on if you did some yesterday, of the guided reading packet. You all got three guided reading books that you can read with your family. 
The first day they might have to help you read the words, but after that you should be able to read them on your own. I'm so glad that I got to read to you today and want Ava to have a very happy birthday and the rest of you, I'll see you tomorrow.